LGBTQ representation in pop culture can be found almost anywhere. Because overt representation on major platforms has been sparse, a common practice for queer consumers of entertainment and media is to find little tidbits of storytelling or music that we can relate to. One could argue that a Taylor Swift song has gay themes just out of lyrics that tell the story of a person in a forbidden relationship. Or that David Bowie's Rebel Rebel and Modern Love are odes to bisexuality and living outside the binary. This is done by relying on subtext, which is defined as any underlying or distinct concept in a creative work that is implicit and never revealed by the creator, but understood by the observer. Now, if you're having trouble wrapping your brain around that, I'll just have Haley Kiyoko translate it for you. Whether it was gay or not, I made it gay. Easy enough, right? A perfect example of a production with strong underlying queer themes is Patti Smith's debut, Horses. Horses is a legendary body of work and unique in the way that it merged poetry with proto-punk and garage art rock soundscapes thanks to the contributions of producer John Cale from the Velvet Underground. This album is an homage to Patti Smith's God Star pantheon, taking inspirations from her biggest heroes, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, and Bob Dylan, as well as poets and writers in her circle, such as Allen Ginsberg and William Burroughs. The opening song, a reinterpretation of Van Morrison's Gloria, incorporated lines from Smith's poem, Oath and she uses female pronouns when referring to the person that the narrator of the song is lusting after, turning the song into a lesbian anthem. The following reggae-infused track, Redondo Beach, was inspired by an argument Smith had with her sister, who disappeared shortly after, on Redondo Beach, but eventually returned to her. The song was a result of Smith ruminating on the possibility that her sister might never come back. Redondo Beach is one of California's most queer populated beaches, so the song has easily been interpreted by many listeners as a woman who mourns her girlfriend who drowned after they had an argument. The final track, Land, a combination of three different pieces that included a vivid sexually charged encounter between two men, was inspired by William S. Burroughs' novel The Wild Boys. The premise of the Wild Boys was a youth movement of young gay men whose goal was the downfall of Western civilization. In a feature story for Beatdown magazine, Smith said of Burroughs, William used to come to CBGB to see us. Of course his work inspired me. Horses, the opening of Horses, with Johnny's confrontation in the locker room, was very inspired by William's The Wild Boys. In The Wild Boys, there is also a Johnny. My Johnny is a continuation of William's Johnny. Smith effortlessly blurred the lines between masculine and feminine as well, appearing in a subtle yet subversive form of drag on the cover, donning a white blouse and suspenders with a blazer draped over her shoulder. The photo was taken by her closest friend, longtime roommate and muse Robert Maplethorpe. And Maplethorpe wasn't the only queer man that Patti Smith took inspiration from. To this day, she never misses an opportunity to speak of her idol, the French poet Arthur Rimbaud, even purchasing his childhood home in Ardennes on the French-Belgian border. As Daisy Jones wrote for Vice magazine, by embracing herself entirely as an uncompromisingly androgynous, loud, and complex human being, Patty rejects labels in a way that feels effortless. She invites you to do the same thing too. Smith even confirmed this herself, that despite not identifying as queer, her work reflects the fact that she feels total freedom as an artist. On horses, that's why the sleeve note has the statement about being beyond gender. By that, I mean as an artist, I can take any position, any voice that I want. It is easy to find queer subtext almost anywhere, as long as any struggle or experience reflected in the work mirrors that of an individual who is queer. A perfect example could be the Who's My Generation, which Smith covers on this album. An anthem for every new generation railing against the one that came before it. And it could easily be interpreted as an anthem for queer kids railing against their homophobic elders. 
what makes horses stand out from any other work with overlying and underlying queer themes is Smith's deep appreciation, celebration, and acknowledgement of the queer writers and artists who inspired her. To this day, she doesn't do one interview without mentioning Ginsburg, Rimbaud, or Robert Maplethorpe. She never tried to be anything but herself, and she did it effortlessly. And on top of that, she carried the punk revival on her back. Now tell me, what could be queerer than that? 